<laughs> oh, wonderful. That's where all this started. Asheville, North Carolina. Awesome. Right. Greetings from Asheville. Um, I hope your wife is well. She yeah. is, yes. I want to say to thank you to everyone who's prayed. Uh, you know, Emily had stage four cancer uh, four or five months ago. I thought she was a goner, and she's completely clear, cured. Awesome. Yeah. It's all very abstract without having more detail. What she's asking is that she's had, she had an experience with a fully materialized craft and subsequently has had experiences, sounds like in consciousness, with someone who's in the next world, as it were. Yeah, who, who it has. To. Um, and the thing is to understand is to look at, uh, I, I call it, you know, it, in the ancient t excuse me, times, they would call this the eye of oneness. So looking at this in a unitive way. Um, so there really is no distance between these dimensions, say the afterlife and the astral, except what our minds construct. Because your conscious mind is omnipresent. So your conscious mind can experience something from an ancestor or a relative who's in their astral body of light, whatever, in the next world, or a spirit being, an ancient spirit being, or an angelic being, I know these all exist, or an extraterrestrial spacecraft in this dimension, or that has resonated to where it's moved into astral, very close to what you would call the spirit world. Now, as I said, when the, the, the Lockheed Skunk Works guy had this, his out-of-body experience with the astral, and he hit the craft, because it, but it, and it moved it, it was not as materialized what was over your head, but it was there and it looked exactly like a craft like this, but it has shifted just into that near, what I call the near astral, sort of a trans-dimensional energy field. And if you understand that all of this is on a continuum, we create these like barriers between dimensions. So in a sense, we create our own compartmentalization. So we have our bodies, we through the 3D world, everything's linear, and that's the myth we create because that's where our understanding is. But that's not what's actually operating all the time. 
And so there will be moments where we can break into and experience something in consciousness that's in this another dimension, whether it be the afterlife or an interstellar civilization that's resonating beyond the frequency of light and matter before it steps down, as it were, into 3D. But all of it is on a continuum, and the only thing that separates our understanding it or making it look like it's a us versus them, or not an us versus them, a, a yin and yang thing, is the lens we look at it through. So what we have to do is adjust our paradigm to understand that the whole con that it not only can, but does, and it does at all times. And uh, from a higher level of consciousness, um, and perhaps from a higher level of civilization where you become interstellar, um, this understanding would be very, very normal and natural, okay? From our level, w at this stage of our evolution as a society and also as individuals, it seems very strange. But I think it will become less strange as it becomes more every day. If you'll humor me one more question that I have, because I was debating which to ask you, so... Um, yes. And maybe, this, maybe everyone else knows this, but why is it that ETs accept the protocol here, and why don't they just... Like, the, the ones that were over my head, um, they were there for about 40 seconds, that's it, and then went straight up, straight across so you couldn't see it anymore with the trees. Right. Why didn't they stop and land and say, hey? Uh -huh. well, well, the question is, why didn't they stop? You know, why wouldn't a craft stop and land and say, hey, they have sometimes. I just told you at Joshua Tree, we had a, this, this sphere come in, and there was a being there, and literally waved it. It's on our website. And the question is, why don't they do this at you know, Yankee Stadium during the... the, 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 the okay. Uh, uh, this is like when Larry King asked me, why don't they land on the White House lawn? I've probably been asked that question uh, 30,000 times. Um, and, and the reason, but here's the reason for it. Is that, and the answer is really an important answer. Um, how successful has our misadventure been for instituting Jeffersonian democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan? Okay, and we're dealing with humans living in the same century, on the same planet, kind of. Now, don't get me started. Okay, now, the point I'm making, without becoming politically incorrect, is that if you have a civilization that is thousands to millions of years more developed than ours, and they were to come in and force disclosure, let's say, by being that open, a couple things would happen. First, the world would divide into idolatry, people who'd worship them, like the people on the island making a, 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 the plane, the, bi, the, the propeller plane, or would demonize them. The military and intelligence community would say, we've been invaded, and we're back to the movie Independence Day. Okay, and it would galvanize the fear to justify unifying the world, as Ronald Reagan said at the UN, around an extraterrestrial threat. So if I have figured this out with my limited capabilities, I'm quite sure these interstellar civilizations have figured it out. Anything that is that frontal could be, would, would have blowback that would not be good. So they've let themselves be known in a number of ways. They've tested how humans react to that. But again, over the course of the thousands of years of human history, and particularly you look at the last 50 years, it's been quite a bit, but they're still testing our responses. And, and, so, and so, so I'm trying to answer your question, so if I can finish. So the ETs do not want to do something that would precipitate either uh, panic, misunderstanding, and worse, the galvanization of uh, the military using it like a 9-11 event to create all kinds of boogeymen in space. They know that that is exactly how an event like you're talking about would be used. I know it, they know it. And so the only way that global open contact is gonna happen, like you're discussing, is that if it is under a CE5 protocol with a lot of world leaders involved, this could happen, we're working on this. Uh, it's done in a way that is invitational 
and, co and coherent. Uh, if it happens the other way, it could be something that would have a lot of bad consequences that are unintended to most people. Um, the other problem with it is that what would be the purpose in doing that if the people aren't um, ready? And you know how I think they're measuring how ready we are? Is how much we go out there and pull ourselves out of YouTube and the television and Netflix and go out under the stars together and with intent and sincerity ask them to make contact. That says to them that we're ready. And if we don't do that, then we're dilettantes. And we're sitting at home in front of our TVs being dilettantes. So I think that you have to walk the walk, not just talk it. And I think that's what they're measuring. Um, and there's uh, many people have said, well, you know, certainly they would have cures for cancer and AIDS and, and could do all, I said, yes, of course, but the, our covert programs have all these things already also. They do, it's not a myth. So they're watching that there are certain types of humans that like to keep all this secret and other types of humans who are passive or cowardly. So how do we find the, the, our voice? How do we find our, um, our courage to do this in a way that is really a good event for humanity? And I think that's the measure. Now, there are certain conditions where that may not happen. I think if we had a massive earth change type event, or if we'd gone the mutual assured destruction, a massive thermonuclear event with thousands of missiles, there, the skies would be filled with ET craft trying to intervene. But short of that sort of just cataclysmic, stupid sort of thing happening, they're going to they're gonna want us to learn and to, because this is our planet, we're the children of Earth, and they're going to want us to learn to do this, to educate one another, to care for one another, to make contact openly. And that's the measure, that's the metric they're looking. And even with disclosure, they're watching to see how much makes it out that's true and how much of it gets folded into disinformation. You know, if you read the paper I wrote, When Disclosure Serves Secrecy, if you haven't read it, you should. It's on the website. Um, where disclosure information and evidence gets folded into the whole fear mongering that is the stock and trade of the UFO subculture. Um, so I think we have to be um, aware that this is being monitored by these civilizations who I'm sure work together. Um, there's no question about it. I mean, if we have coalitions and we work together as dysfunctional as humans are, you can be assured that interstellar civilizations work together with infinite more coherence than we do. That this is being measured and observed and there are certain metrics that I think they're looking at. How mass society, media, and political establishments react, how military reacts, how the public reacts, but also what are the people doing? And at, you know, having been in the kind of the center of this for 25 years now, 2015 will be the 25th year since I founded all this. Um, what, I, what I feel over and over again is that the real action is with each individual person and then coming together and making this wave happen. Uh, and I think that uh, for that reason, a forced disclosure by the ETs or an event happening from on high on Capitol Hill or the president, those are the two least likely ways. And this other path, it just involves more effort and work, um, but that's part of the lesson. You know, Earth is a schoolhouse floating through space. And we're here to learn certain lessons about self-realization, but also self-actualization and creating a new world. And I think that's really why we're here together at this time. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being here and stay in touch. Hope to see you.